This video is the first video in a series in which we'll build a REST API completely from scratch. Throughout the series, we're going to be following best practices. And when I say best practices, I don't mean what is considered to be best practice, but it's what I actually would do if I were building an application completely from scratch to make sure that the application is resilient, compliant, something that you can actually run confidently in production. We'll also be following the latest features that are available from ASP.NET 8. And we aren't necessarily going to be using all the features that are the latest features, but when a feature is available that is better than what was previously available, then we'll use that instead. For example, when we talk about global error handling in ASP.NET, then there are new features that are available in ASP.NET 8 that weren't available as part of ASP.NET 6. And most importantly, this will be sort of a real world example, and you'll be able to start your application simply by using Docker Compose Up and that's it. Lastly, this is the architecture and structure that I would actually recommend for you to use if you're building a small to medium fairly simple application. Okay, now the reason why this over here is important is because if you're building an application that is complex or you're working in a domain that is complex, or perhaps you have many team members that are going to be working on this project, then you may want to start with an architecture that sets different foundations to how the project will naturally evolve. The project structure that we're going to be working with is perfectly suited for well-disciplined teams, even for medium applications, and applications that are a bit more complex. If you're a .NET developer, then I would highly recommend for you to watch not only this video, but all the videos in this series, because I'm sure you're going to be seeing things that you probably aren't doing in your production applications today. I'll also make sure to keep the series suitable for beginners, not complete beginners in software development in general, people who have knowledge, but also just to cover a bit more of the basics from time to time, so everyone is up to speed on what we're doing and why. If you're new to the channel, then welcome. My name is Amichai, and in this channel, I talk about software architecture, design patterns, various things that you really want to be familiar with if you're a software engineer. So if that sounds interesting or you want to stay up to date with the episodes as they come out, then make sure to smash the subscribe button. Now, without further ado, let's jump right in and start talking about software architecture. When it comes to building an application completely from scratch, when we're talking about small to medium sized applications, then I would recommend not doing any of the three that we currently see. So not to start freestyle and just hope that it'll have a good structure as you go on. But also I wouldn't go ahead and start creating various projects following clean architecture. And definitely, definitely I wouldn't start with microservices. What I would do is I would use some of the principles of clean architecture. Now you don't need to know clean architecture as a prerequisite for the series, but we will talking about specific principles from clean architecture, we'll see how we can integrate them in our application that we'll be building. But what is important is that we're not going to be building various projects that are going to have references between them. And that's how our application will be structured. But we also aren't going to create the application completely freestyle and hope that things will work out. Somewhere over here, there is a sweet spot in which we can build applications that are well structured but without the added complexity and boilerplate that comes with starting off directly with clean architecture. Okay, so currently we don't have anything. And what I want us to do is to go ahead and structure our project. Now, the way this is going to look is that in the top level, we'll have the source directory and the test directory, and we'll also have the actual solution file. Alongside this, we'll also have over here, the editor config, the global JSON, all of these will also sit in the top most layer. So for this, let's go ahead and say .NET new SLN, and let's give it the name one review. Next, let's go ahead and create the source and the tests folders. And inside the source folder, let's go ahead and create the actual project. Now, because we're building a REST API, then let's go ahead and say .NET new web API, and we'll be calling it one review. So as expected, now we have under one review slash source, we also have the one review actual source code. The last thing I want to do back in the root directory is to go ahead and say .NET new and create here a new editor config. Another thing that I always create in every project is a global JSON and a git ignore. Okay, so overall, this over here is what we have. But the solution file, if we look at it, then we can see it's still empty and there are no projects within it. So what we want us to do is to say .NET SLN add 
and add all the various projects to the solution file. If you're working on Windows, then this won't work and instead you need to do the following. In any case, let's go ahead and open the project in Visual Studio Code. Now, real quick before we continue, I want to let you know that I just launched my deep dive into domain driven design course in which I walk you through the process of taking any domain, however complex it may be, breaking it up, following domain driven design into subdomains and defining the bounded context and finally designing the underlying aggregates, which you can take and map one to one to the code base. Overall, I now have four courses on Dome Train, getting started and deep dive into both clean architecture and domain driven design. So if you want a step-by-step -step guide on how to build projects following clean architecture and domain driven design, then definitely check out those courses. Now back to the video. Okay, so the very first thing I want us to do is to actually get rid of everything that we aren't going to use. So we can go ahead and get rid of this HTTP file over here. And also inside the program CS, I'm going to get rid of almost, almost everything We'll be adding the relevant things back as we need them. But for now, all we're going to need is the builder, the app, and to start the app. Okay, now if you're not familiar with what's going on over here, then you really don't need to know at this point. All you need to know is that over here, we can go ahead and configure all the various services. So this is the dependency injection configurations, etc. And over here, we can go ahead and configure the request pipeline. And of course, there are other things as well that you can do over here and over here. If you're lacking knowledge on what we have currently on the screen, then I'll put some thumbnails of videos of mine on the screen and check out those videos. They'll give you some context into what's going on here. For now, all I want us to do is to just clean things up so we don't have anything we don't need. So likewise in the CS Proj, then I'm going to get rid of the open API swagger related things. And basically I'm going to leave us with nothing. So overall what we have, we're using .NET 8 and we're using the web SDK, which includes in it all the various assemblies that will allow us to use the .NET framework and ecosystem that we have for writing REST APIs or web APIs in general. Okay, now that we have this, let's talk about the structure that we're going to have. So over here, we're going to have a folder called controllers and I'll make this a bit bigger so you can see what's going on. And this folder, as you would expect, is where the controllers will sit. Other than this, we're also going to have a folder called services and a folder called domain. And the last high level folder that we're going to be talking about for now is the persistence folder as well. Okay, so again, all we have is one single project. And in this project, we have the controllers. This is how users will be interacting with our application. The controllers will be interacting directly with the various services in the services folder. And the services will go ahead and orchestrate the operation that's taking place, the use case, the underlying flow that we're trying to run. To do this, they may go ahead and interact with various web clients or with the database and they'll orchestrate whatever needs to be done. And finally, they'll return a result to the controller, which will return a result back to the client. The persistence is where we're going to have anything database related. And the domain is where we're going to have the underlying domain objects, domain logic, and anything that has to do with business decisions or business logic or terms in general. Now, either next week or the week after that, then there'll be a video regarding application logic versus domain logic versus presentation logic, in which we'll talk about exactly what sits in which layer. So if this doesn't make too much sense yet, then this should make more sense as you see more examples. And we talk about the specifics and the classification of each one of these logical components in our code base. So like we said, there's a sweet spot where you don't go ahead and just do whatever you want or you go ahead and create multiple projects. Doesn't have to be clean architecture, but just an architecture where you have multiple projects and references between them, which many times is an overkill from a boilerplate and just the, the time consumption of building and structuring such a project. Then there's this sweet spot where you have the best of both worlds. You work within one assembly, but you still have the structure to put the different logical components in the corresponding project. And of course, as we start building the project and we add more and more features, then this will become larger and larger and we'll have various decisions that we'll need to make. But this is the initial structure that I think is perfectly suited for any small to medium, pretty simple application as you're just starting out. Now, of course, you won't 100% of the time start out your project like this. It depends on the domain. It depends on the problem space you will probably know if this is suitable for you 
or if you need something a bit more advanced, depending on the environment and the domain that you're working in. And when I say environment, I'm talking specifically about the teams that we're working on, who are the people, how many teams, what are the relationship between the teams, how often can you sync with them? All these will guide you to whether or not this structure can work for you. But from my experience, most of the time, something like this just to get the product up and running until it reaches some scale, then this is a great place to start out. This is only the starting point. If you see that you start having many controllers, many services, you have a lot of logic in your domain folder and you start noticing that you're losing the cohesion that you originally had, then this is a good time to stop and say, okay, maybe perhaps what I should do is I should refactor the architecture and what will happen if this application actually grows and morphs and starts becoming a bit more of a mess is that you'll take each one of the folders and this will likely turn into its own project and it will interact with another project which was previously a folder. Okay, so I want you to have in mind the sort of evolution that you can go through where a folder will turn into its entire layer and sometime in the future, then slices of each one of the layers, something like this, all of these will go ahead and become its own project inside a microservice or modular monolith architecture. And in the end, the architecture, the project, the code base is a live thing, things always change. And every once in a while, we hit this sort of threshold where we need to pause rethink what we currently have and refactor if necessary. In the upcoming videos, we'll talk about our domain, how to structure our REST API, how to build the actual endpoints, what parts of logic sit in which part of the application, logging, error handling, and much, much more. So definitely smash the subscribe button if you don't want to miss out on that. And of course, smash the like button because why not? And I'll see you in the next one.